Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is actually going to be a pre-recorded video of a let's play of a space game that I may have taken a look at previously. I'm actually away right now for about 8 to 9 days visiting a relative who doesn't believe in internet, unfortunately. So I can't really uh, upload videos from here. For this reason I decided to pre-upload a bunch of stuff and this is going to be one of those pre-uploaded videos. Enjoy it, hopefully you like it and I'll see you when I come back. Space out! Anyway, so we have to cut off our main engines, um, and yeah, so this is so cool, look at that, zero G effects. Not many games give you that, huh? Uh, alright, 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 oh, it's here, right? Very good, and then, ignite second stage. So now we're going to be transferring to the moon's orbit. I believe, uh, from what I remember, we're not actually transferring to the orbit because they've built an um, an almost like a space elevator like construction. Where do I press? Here? Yeah, okay. Which is actually super difficult because of um, I think I made a video about this a long time ago. Um, to build a space elevator on the moon, you kind of have to. Um, reach way way past the moon okay it's kind of difficult to explain but basically because the moon doesn't spin very fast the space elevator would not be very easy to build it's much easier on earth actually one day i really should make a very extensive video on space elevators and explain how this works there's a, um, a really awesome japanese paper written about this from a few years ago where they actually show you like every detail, every single detail of how to build a successful space elevator with the only thing missing. The, literally the only thing we can't really do yet for space elevators is that we need to build a cable that's going to be about 80,000 kilometers long and not rip apart. It has to be, it has to have a very, very high um, tensile strength. Yeah, so there you go. There is a space elevator to the moon. Uh, the last I've heard is that they were trying to see if the um, a type of a polymer made from spider silk can actually be good enough. But apparently even spider silk is not strong enough. So we need something stronger. Alrighty. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Objective. Dock to the station. Okay, so this is where I actually stopped last time. I remember the, the, the docking part was super fun. It's actually like, kind of like a Kerbal Space Program me, where you have to... Yeah, see, you have to, like, align yourself with the docking, I'm gonna say hole, but I, I'm sure it has a more scientific name, which, uh, it's a docking port, but hole sounds cooler. Okay, so how do I, I'll move down, control. And then there's also a radar, right, that's going to notify me if I'm going too fast. So this is kind of cool. This is basically kind of like how it really works in um, in space when they dock to the ISS, for example. Obviously, maybe not as simple in terms of controls. Also, it's usually automated nowadays. The uh, the Russians actually developed a very very extensive docking procedure that basically is completely automated and is perfectly safe. You only need to rely on the manual when something goes absolutely horribly wrong. And it hasn't happened in, in, in decades, as far as I remember. Unless they haven't told us. It's very possible. Maybe something did happen. There's actually a really uh, kind of a dramatized version of a space movie called... I believe it's called Salute, because it's about the Salute station, the Soviet station that was... Um, that lost control a few decades ago, and it was actually about to crash onto the US soil. But the... I think it was still Soviet Union, the Soviets, or maybe it was already Russia, I don't remember. Um, they actually, they figured out how to um, execute this really complex docking maneuver, and they were able to save it. They were actually able to stabilize the station and save the station, and even send astronauts there afterwards. It was a ridiculous maneuver. An almost impossible feat. But that's probably because they didn't want to kind of um, disappoint their American counterparts. Alright, so that was cool. 
Very short segment. Hopefully we'll get more of these, but very cool segment. All right, so we are now in zero G. I thought you're never going to talk to me again. Claire, we agreed. From now on, it's just me and myself. Me and my inner thoughts. I need some peace. We need some time apart, you know? You know what I'm saying, Claire? Stop. Stop it. Just stop it. Let me, let me enjoy this. This is nice and peaceful. Look at this. You know, zero G, around the moon. Absolutely quiet. And so, so cool. Like, this looks amazing. Five years after the blackout. Oh, that's what Pearson is. It's a space station. Oh, oh, it's a space station above the moon. Now it makes sense. That's what the painting, uh, that's what the picture was showing. Okay, cannot go here. Um, this actually kind of reminds me of that other game called Adrift. I don't know, you've probably heard or seen it before. It was supposed to be like a VR game. And um, I actually made several videos of Adrift um, and was going to post it on the channel a couple of years ago. And then um, I got to try it in VR even. I got to actually play it in VR at someone's uh, someone else's computer. And the thing is, it's the first time ever that I actually felt uh, I felt sick playing the game, uh, physically sick. The like so okay. Imagine doing this, and I'm sure some of you may be already feeling kind of queasy, but doing this in that game and also specifically in VR gives you such an uncomfortable feeling. It's just it's really weird. And I wonder if I'm maybe one of the minority of people experiencing this, because I never really get sick from um, physically sick from playing the video games. But I, I could not could not even continue. I could not finish it. So I abandoned the playthrough. I don't know how the game ends. I just couldn't do it. And I'm already stuck. I'm just bumping against the walls here. Wait a second. That is not how Earth looks from this distance. Oh, wait, no, we're not on the moon yet. So it makes sense. I guess we're somewhere between the Earth and the Moon. Um, what am I doing? Airlock. Oh, that's what I'm doing. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What? What's happening? No, no, close it. Close it. Why? Why is oxygen oxygen depleting? Huh? So I have only have three minutes to do whatever I need to do. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Station power low, tab objective. Okay, bring life support systems back online. Uh, how? How do I do that? Is it here? Is anything here? No, nothing is here. Okay. Where is the life support? What is this? This looks like life support tea. Grab it. Take with us. I'm sure we'll need it at some point. I have a good feeling about this. It's a blue canister. Blue means good, right? All right, central hub. <gasps> I only have two minutes. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. -y. Oh, no, 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 no. What is this? Interact. Oh, yeah, I did it. I was right. I was right about the blue thing. Elevator offline. What is this? It's yellow. Oh, this is oxygen. Oh, okay, so I'm not, it's not so bad. Uh, why do I only have three minutes? That's so unfair. All right, um, uh, 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 reboot, reboot. Yes, press the reboot button, now. Not enough power. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, power, power is here. What is this? How do I fix this? What do I, what do I plug in there? One, another one of those blue things? Oh, it's a battery, the blue thing is a battery. That makes total sense. I could have figured this out a long time ago. This is a oxygen, let's take one more. Oh, I found an oxygen thingy. Oh, I'm safe now. Oh my god, look at all this oxygen. Guys, we're fine. Is that space? Maybe. That's maybe space. I don't know what kind of an EVA suit you're wearing, but why does it have so little oxygen in it? That's ridiculous. Who made this? Did you 3D print this in your maker camp? Okay, I need this battery, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, there we go, there we go. Grab it. And... Put it in the thingy. 
I love how relatively simple the puzzles are so far. I don't have to like look around for things for hours. And it's pretty intuitive. Like you just go in here, you plug the thing, and then you probably go and press the reboot button. Wait, that was just one. <gasps> how many do I need? Shoot, I need one more. Right? Yeah, 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 I need one more. Okay, I need some oxygen. I don't think I saw another one. Oh, okay, my flashlight also has power. I did not know that. I just realized there's a power on the, on the bottom there. Okay, I may need to take one more. Oh, Jesus, I need to take one more. Is there one in here? No. No, there's nothing here. Well, what, what are, where is it? I mean, they're pretty easy to see. How could I have missed it? Hmm. Oh, do I just pick this one? Can I take it out? Maybe I can just take it out. Right? Ah, oh, come on. Well, what is this? It's not fair. Why Why does this door need need the thing to be open? Like, how does it make any sense? I don't think it makes any sense. Please be in here. Please be in here. No, it's more oxygen. Uh, none of these open, right? Does this open? Nope, this also does not open. Okay, then. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh, wow, this looks amazing. Look at that. Oh, the moon is right there. I did not even see that. Oh, this game is just glorious. It's amazing, I'm telling you. Anyway. Oh, I can take this one. Oh, I see, I see, I see. All right. So that totally makes sense. So this is the one from... No, wait. That doesn't make sense. What? Oh. Oh, I get it. Oh, my God. This is all I had to do. Are you serious? Put this in here. This will keep the door open. Now take this one from here. Oh, Jesus. Now, now I see. Now I see what I have to do. Well... That only took me about 10 minutes of my life here on the station. All right, here we go. That's that's probably it, right? Okay. Okay, here we go. And now I can go in here and reboot. Yay! Backup power Life support systems online. All right. Okay, last time I heard something like this, um, that was an alien isolation. And then certain monsters started coming out. I hope that's not what this game has. I really hope there's no monsters here. I do not want to see any monsters in this game. All right. Um, uh, now what? Access station power inside the control center in the Libra wing. I don't know where that is. You didn't give me any maps. But everything is working, right? Oh no, station power very low. But we have oxygen, which is good. We don't have any MPT network. Oh yeah, that's what we're here to fix. So that kind of makes sense. So here we go. All right, so you are here, right? You have to be here. Sleeping quarters and control center. This map is really not helping. How is this supposed to help me? Worst map ever. That's not where I go. I guess we'll go back, right? Wait, but I closed this door. Okay, I need to remember this is in three dimensions, so I have to actually start looking like above and below as well. So maybe there's a door I'm missing somewhere. Ooh, I found a package. What's this? To Copernicus Moon Hub. ASE parts. I believe ASE refers to those like um, cryogenic thingy majiggies, right? That failed. We still don't really know exactly what happened in there, but that's kind of the assumption right now. Um, okay, do I re have to remove the battery again? But that will disable the thing, no? Well, let's try. I can't. It won't let me, right? I don't think I can. 
Hi. I'm already stuck again. I, I was just stuck like a few seconds ago. Why am I stuck again? Whoa, look at that. There's actually dust on the screen. That is crazy. Can you see the dust from like, you know, the station being abandoned? That's insane. Like I told you, the amount of detail here, spectacular. Oh, seal of approval. And also, uh, look at the look at the vista. Look at the view. That's crazy. You can literally see the moon. If I stay here long enough, I think we'll see. No, nope. no, we don't see. I, I thought we we're actually orbiting, but I forgot it's a space elevator. It's supposed to be above the same spot. That's the purpose of a space elevator. Oh, and there goes my flashlight. Okay, so I am stuck. I'm gonna go and figure things out and come back when I figure them out. Oh my god, are you serious? It was right here. The entrance was right here. It was like literally, it opened up below me. How how did I not see this? If you're screaming in, chat, in the comments below right now saying that, you know, I am not very intelligent and things of that nature, I deserve it because I just didn't see it. It was not very observant. Oh, look at that. Music. Drama. Intensity. I think I just saved. I think the game just saved. Which is great because I have not saved the game at all since the beginning. I really should, huh? Um, okay, we are going to see what this is. And this is nothing. We are then going to go and see what this is. And also nothing. It is so difficult to orient yourself in three dimensions. It's insane. Like, people are not designed for this. I don't know how we're gonna go explore the space. We're just not ready. Okay, let's let's go here. I think this is what we have to do. Okay, let's listen. Expedition team, do you copy? Copy control. We're all set. Ready for descent. The MPT network is still down, so expect the lights to go out as you descend towards Copernicus. Thanks for the heads up, Pearson. Remember, Sarah, our oxygen after arriving, you'll have 40 minutes to find out what caused the blackout and bring our MPT network back online. If you're not back by then, we'll have to evacuate without you. We hear you, Control. Rolf, you ready? I am. And don't worry, Control. It's probably just a glitch. We'll be back before you know it. Let's find out how they've been holding up down there. Alex, commence descent protocol. All systems go. Descent in three. So that answers the question of us not being Rolf either. We're not Rolf. And that basically means that Fortuna is our name. Who named me Fortuna? That's pretty cool. Um, so this is literally the elevator to the moon. But it's offline. Right? Yeah. So we can't use it. And to use this, or to activate this, we need to... Do we have to give it voltage again? I guess maybe we'll have to find another one of those batteries. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, I haven't seen any flying around. But I also haven't really explored very thoroughly. I don't even know if I've been here before. Oh my god, this is so disorienting. You know, for a person that basically literally explains space stuff like 24-7... I am absolutely horrible at navigating in actual three dimensions in space. What did that do? Okay, but why? But but why? No, no, no but, but, but why? Why did I do this? I like this better. You get to see stuff. Okay. I don't know where to go. I mean, I kind of get the point, right? We have to. It says st uh, station power inside the control center. Oh, okay. So we need to actually keep going. We need to keep going to the Libra station. I really wish they had, like, signs or something. For people like me that do not orient very well. In three dimensions. It says, oh, it says Alex. Is Alex outside? Is Alex dead oh who's alex 
Okay, so once again, kind of stuck. And and this time you're going to have to be stuck with me. I, I'm going to make you stuck with me. We're going to be stuck together. That's why it's called Let's Play. We're going to Let's Play Stuck Together. Um, oh, so, oh, oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Now, no, makes sense. We have to go to number three. So it's connected to the circle thing in the middle. We're in a circle thing in the middle. So one of these little hole thingies is going to lead us to number three. Right? There you go. Li Libra. 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 It's Libra, but I think it's spelled Libra. So it's a little bit confusing. Oh, I got confused by the color. I thought I was coming from here, but I, I didn't think I came from here before. Right? Okay. I think this is all new. Yeah, yeah, definitely new because there's a another one of those voice messages. Whoa, something just hit me. And look at that, everything's fine. Who did that? Who did that? It's better not turn into alien isolation suddenly. Alright, so now that we are kind of here, let's go to the toilet. We haven't been in a while. Let's use the bathroom. Come on, open. Damn it. I just wanted to see what the bathroom looks like. Okay, a monorail delay could cost lives. Oh, Rolf. We found Rolf's house. And Sarah. How, how come they have their own uh, cabins? Alright. There you go, buddy. Almost there. We'll touch up your paint job later, don't worry. Are you ready to go? We've almost got the elevator running again. Yeah, just patching up Alex before we head down. Are you bringing that thing along? Of course. We'll need all the help we can get. Besides, you wouldn't have made it to that airlock if it hadn't been for him. <sighs> this MPT blackout can't be just a glitch, Rolf. Everything is still dark down there. Last time there was an outage. <sighs> Did you hear the message from Earth? No. Aliens. What did they say? They can't even send ships up here anymore without the MPT. It's crazy, right? We're the only ones able to investigate the blackout. Oh, Sarah, we need to get you guys down to the surface ASAP. We don't have much time. <sighs> okay, let's go. All right, so now we know Alex is not a person. I think it's a robot. I think, because she was repairing it. Danger, electrical, shock risk. Uh... Huh? ASC, that's part of that uh, cryogenic thing, no? Council member Laverde. The MPT is still offline. What's going on? Backup power is finally running up here at the station and we're pre repairing the Pearson elevator to take us down to Copernicus Moon Hub. To provide any assistance, you might need to bring the MPT back online. We're coming. Please be safe. Sarah Baker, Pearson station engineer. So I think uh, they were, they clearly were the first team to go here to try to repair stuff. And as we can see from the damage, did not work. Things did not work. Cool. Very cool design of the cabin. Don't know what that is. So, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Nothing else here. What is this? Looks like a, well, um, a welding mask, right? Or something of that nature. And I think maybe we cannot go here. We're going to go explore Rolf's cabin because I am pretty sure that's where we're going to find out the password. Right? Makes sense. Okay, so... Okay. They don't really need an actual bed to sleep, though, do they? Why do they actually have an actual bed? Moonman, first contact. Is this a foreshadowing? Are you saying there is going to be a first contact? Because if so, very cool. The astronaut docks into a rundown space station on his way to the moon, and he discovers the clues of an old friend. Convinced that they may still be alive on the moon, he doubles his efforts to reactivate the space elevator in a race against time. Cool, very cool. Very, very, very awesome. 
So, oh, I can actually look at the Earth, right? Oh my god, look at this. This is awesome. Also, there's still a bit of light here and there. So, they, they, they do have energy from something. They're still surviving. Obviously, not as much as we used to have. Or as they used to have. We still have quite a lot. Um, Hubble, right? No? Yeah. It looks a little bit off in terms of dimensions. This looks a little bit thicker than it should be. I have my little Lego Hubble right, right next to me. A Lego model of Hubble. What's this? Um, Cryosleep machinery. After the Cryosleep generator and the Huygens research facility malfunctioned in 2048, Maria's search for answers led her to investigate what remained of the machine. Unable to determine the exact cause of the malfunction, she sent the fragment to Pearson Space Station mechanic Rolf Robertson for assessments. So I guess we're going to discover what's up. I'm one of the few survivors of the Huygens cryosleep malfunction. I recently came across a fragment recovered from the cryogenerator and was hoping you could inspect it. Also, is there any way I can get my ASC to project holographic data from that day? I want to find out what really happened. Maria Gonzalez. Dear Ms. Gonzalez, I've inspected the generator fragment you sent over, but I can't find anything conclusive. As far as holographic data, it's unfortunately located based it's unfortunately location based. Holograms can only be projected where they occurred. If the Lunar Council ever clears access to Huygens again, I think the best thing to do is to bring your ASC and to check the holographic data that's there. Okay, so sounds like the answer she's looking for. Oh, there we go. 2539, 2539, 2539. Sounds like the answers are on that thingy that we saw, so we might as well bring it with us. Whoa, I'm getting dizzy. <gasps> Collect. What? Oh, this. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, we can't take it with us, unfortunately. I thought maybe we can take it with us and maybe at some point we can use it at that thingy that he mentioned. Uh, but we can't. Two, five, three, nine. This is like the least secure facility in the world. Wow, looks cool. But massive. Too big. Too big to explore. All right. Um... Never go out without ASE by your side. So what's ASE? I don't really understand the purpose of that thing. I think it's some sort of a data keeping device that keeps track of what's happening around you. Essentially, it logs the information of what's happening. Um, Council member MacArthur, in the past few months, my team and I have encountered problems with construction material shipments. We were supposed to be finished with the Orion Wing by now, but again, we've missed our milestone due to the shipment being repeatedly cancelled. When can we expect the Lunar Council to approve further shipments? Sarah Baker. Engineer Baker, the Lunar Council has decided to shift resource priorities around because of new construction on the moon. For the time being, I recommend you make do with what you have. We'll, we all do down here. Council member MacArthur, new construction? Is the Huygens facility finally being repaired? It's about time that place opened up again. There's too much knowledge buried there since the Chrysler malfunction. Engineer Baker, suffice it to say that while a construction project is classified, it does not concern Huygens. Access to the Huygens research facility remains restricted until further notice. So, it sounds like there is something secret going on on the moon. They were constructing something and that may be what malfunctioned. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Let's move on with our lives. And here is, we have nothing. Everything is broken, right? Oh no, never mind. Uh, Orion wing. I can read it, right? But that's useless to us. And. Oh my god, there's too much stuff here. Alright, let's uh, let's see if we find something useful. I feel like there's going to be a lot of stuff that's just kind of fillers. Which I really love, personally. But I'm sure not everyone watching this video will appreciate it. Um, this is evacuation procedures. We don't really need that, right? Oh wait, maybe we do. Anything important here? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's anything important. Can I click anything here? No. So I think we're here to, to fix the elevator, right? This is the elevator controls. 
but I don't see anything interactable just yet. What's this? We interview Lunar Council member Rosa Laverde about the cause of 2014 8 Huygens crisis with malfunction and how can we avoid this type of cat catastrophe in the future. And we still don't really know what happened. And this is generic chips. The only chips on the space station. No brand names allowed. Uh, I guess we just go into that the last area that we have, which is this. Oh, we need a password. We don't have a password. No, this doesn't even open. Right? No, it doesn't open. It's an airlock. Oh, it's under construction. Oh, this is the Orion. Oh, look at that. I, have, I see my own shadow. That's so cool. Wow. Legs. Legs. Okay. That actually kind of scared me for a second. I mean, I, I'm having like nightmares since Alien Isolation. Could not play any space game. And it's funny because I actually finished that space. Like way, way before Alien Isolation. I just could not handle Alien, Alien Isolation. That game is terrifying. Could not do it. We'll do it at some point, but it's really hard. It's not like difficult hard, but it's just terrifying. Um, and it's terrifying if you play like me. Like as you can see, I'm very thorough. I kind of like go through every nook and cranny. I don't want to. I don't like missing things. I like reading short tidbits here and there. I kind of like to really engulf myself in the story, unless that story is about an alien stalking me, like literally 24-7, and that's, that's a problem. So is there something I missed here? Well, wonderful person, hopefully you enjoyed this part, there's going to be another one coming tomorrow, and uh, there's also going to be a few videos that I pre-recorded in advance coming in between these videos, just so that you have something else to watch once in a while. Like I said, I'm going to be back soon, but basically enjoy this, and see you tomorrow.